All right, welcome back guys. In this video, I'm going over the method on how to solve pure bending problems for reinforced concrete. Um, the method is a little bit different than previous uh, composite material problems, and the reason is because concrete is very weak in tension. So we, uh, we generally, in the areas where concrete would be in tension, so in this case where we have positive bending, so any concrete that lies below the neutral axis, we're actually just going to eventually ignore the fact that it's even there and we're going to transfer all of the tensile stress or force um, into the steel rods. So let's let's start out with uh, talking about the moduluses of elasticity and then we'll get back to that stuff. So modulus of elasticity that we're going to be using is 200 gigapascals for steel and the modulus of elasticity for concrete that we're going to be using is uh, 25 gigapascals. So when we we will eventually want to trans um, to transform the steel area into an equivalent concrete area, or an area with the modulus of elasticity that's the same as concrete. So the way that we do that is we have our factor n, and we will have E s over E c. So this is similar to previous videos where we would have 200 over. 25 and uh, and then we get that factor of 8. So you would be maybe tempted to draw your transformed area something like this um, where we have basically just extended the uh, the steel so it's like uh, has the modulus of elasticity of 25 and it uh, just occupies an area that is eight times bigger than the original cross-section of all of these steel rods added together. Uh, and in this case you know you have to count how many there are if there's four then you do like pi r squared, figure out the area of one and multiply it by four. So just don't forget to do that. Um, but what's going on here, like I said before, is concrete is super weak in tension. So if we do have positive bending like this, uh, we'll know that, let's throw on our neutral axis. Uh, it's going to be somewhere like this. I don't really know. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. Um, but anything that lies below the neutral axis, so I'm gonna write that on neutral axis, any concrete that lies below the neutral axis uh, to us is is useless. It, it is not providing uh, any reasonable amount of uh, tensile strength. And so what we do is we actually just pretend it's not there. So we can just erase it like that. And, uh, and we go ahead with the calculation assuming that all of the tensile load is being carried by the steel rods. Um, so really, um, yeah. I guess I didn't really need to make it that big. Um, let me go bring this over. Bring that, something more like that. There we go. Um, so where was I? All right, so uh, this changes the geometry of the problem a little bit though. So let's draw on some of the things that we know from the original, from the original drawing up here. We did say that this distance from the top of the, the, the beam down to the basically the center line of those steel rods, uh, we call that D, and then uh, the width here is is B. So we'll just throw that on. That was a known quantity. Usually, um, the area of this transformed section is just uh, is N times the area of the steel, the original area of those uh, four pieces, or however many pieces there are. And basically, there's some other geometry here going on. We don't actually know exactly where the neutral axis is. What we need to do is we need to find that. So this distance uh, from the top down to the neutral axis, uh, we're going to define that as just x, uh, which would make this distance, uh, which would make this d minus x, which is the basically the distance from the neutral axis to uh, basically the centroid of this shape. Even though we don't really define the geometry of the shape, we just define the area of the shape. Um, but there is also something we should pay attention to here, is the centroid of this shape. And, and this distance, obviously, it is a square or a rectangle, so the distance from the neutral axis to the centroid is going to be x over 2. And like I said, everything above the neutral axis is in compression, as is in any problem in, uh, with a positive bending moment, and everything below the neutral axis is in tension, and we're ignoring the fact that there's a little bit of super weak concrete there because concrete's not good in tension. Um, so what we want to do is we want to basically evaluate the uh, kind of the sum of moments about the neutral axis 
that uh, the compressive stuff is happening uh, and it's, it's basically counteracting the tensile stuff at the bottom. So all we do is we take the area of the top, which is the base times height. So we have, well, or these dimensions. So we have X uh, times B. Uh, so that's the area and then times the distance away from the neutral axis. So this is times X over two. Uh, and then uh, the opposite of that down here in tension it's just the same thing we have. So this is area times the distance to the neutral axis. Uh, so we want the area, which is NAS, times the distance to the neutral axis uh, from its centroid, which is uh, D minus X. And we basically just set that all equal to zero to make sure this thing remains in static equilibrium. So if we clean this up a little bit, we get a sort of nicer looking equation here where we have one half B X squared um, and then we can do a little bit of distribution in here. So plus N A S X minus N A S D is equal to zero. Well, if X is our variable, which it is because we're lit, this is, X is the unknown in this expression. Now we can solve this using the quadratic equation uh, for the roots. And basically we'll usually get one negative answer, one positive answer. And, and that positive answer will be the distance here uh, in millimeters, providing that we've put everything in in the correct units. So by doing that, by solving for x, we will find the location of the neutral axis from the top. Then the next thing that we want to do is we want to find the moment of inertia for this transformed shape about the neutral axis. And then the way that we do that, maybe let's change colors because this was the next logical step. Uh, we have i. And basically, the, for problems that look like this, you're always going to get it in the form of, uh, we'd have the moment of inertia is equal to one third times bx cubed, uh, which is, uh, this basically is the moment of inertia of this top bit about the neutral axis, where the neutral axis sits right on one edge of it. Uh, you can find this expression, um, you'll find this expression written in the back of any mechanics of materials textbook, where it'll be like b, h squared, but in this case the height we've just called it x, so that's why it's written x there. So we'll just say that's the top. Um, and then we'll add in, uh, in our case, in the actual uh, variables and letters that we've used, it is n a s times d minus x squared. And this is the component of the moment of inertia for the bottom part down here. Um, or the, the steel really. And this form here, it's a, it's a little messed up or it looks a little messy, but really what it is, is this is, you've seen it in previous videos where we just do like um, uh, area times, uh, times D squared for part of that uh, radius of gyration. Um, and because we don't actually define a specific geometry for this shape, we only care about the actual, uh, the actual area of it we don't take into consideration any of its actual geometry. We just say, hey, this is that area. It's this, it's located this far away from the neutral axis. And uh, that, therefore it's, you know, it's adding this much to our moment of inertia um, for this whole transformed shape about the neutral axis. But in this, uh, in this exact problem, we actually, once we've solved for X up here, we actually have all of these variables and then we would just get a, a value for the moment of inertia and, uh, and then it would be usually in like uh, millimeters to the power of four or uh, in meters to the power of four. And then from there, uh, we basically just take that value and we plug it into our stress equations. So we have, uh, usually we'll be looking for like our, our max stress in the concrete, um, which will just be MC over I. Right, M is our applied moment, C. Uh, in this case, uh, C is that ma the distance to the, the maximum distance to the most extreme fibers, which is equal to X um, uh, for the concrete. And then I, a moment of inertia, we would have calculated it in this step. And then also we're usually looking for the max stress in the steel. And if you remember, because we've artificially increased this area by a factor of N, because stress is like a force per area, that actually reduces the stress that this expression would give us. So we just basically have to put that back in. So we just multiply n times mc over i. And in this case, c, um, when we're looking at the bottom here, is the distance from the neutral axis. So c in this case would actually be d minus x. But if we know what x is from up here, 
then we'll, we'll also know uh, what d minus x is. All right, so that is how you solve reinforced concrete problems for pure bending. It's a little bit, it's a little bit weird because we're not considering the, the concrete that's in tension, um, but this is the way that we do it. And uh, join me in the next video, and we'll go through these steps for this exact problem. We'll just, uh, we'll say what the moment is and some more information about the, the diameter of the steel rods and stuff. And we'll actually solve for uh, for these values here. Uh, we'll, we'll do every step, and uh, you'll see like how this works with an actual example. All right, see you guys there.